What is going on guys, Gaston right here where we learn more and take our craft further and in today's video I'm going to show you how to tether using a Sony Alpha camera into Lightroom. So there are a few things that you need to know. Number one thing is that we are going to be using cable, we're not going to be using wireless or any other method of tethering. I know that this camera right here, the 7R4, which is the camera that we're going to use for, it, for this example, actually features um, Wi-Fi tethering. I haven't tried that so we're going to be focusing on tethering with a cable. Now, you are going to need a specific cable. This is not going to work with a regular USB-C or USB type A cable. You need to have a special tethering cable and we're going to show you in just a moment which one I use. Also, you're going to have to set up some things in the camera and you're going to have to do some stuff on the computer, turn off some applications. So, let me actually get started with this and show you guys. All right, some of the things that you got to keep in mind is that if you're using Google Drive or Backup and Sync, Dropbox, or any of the Adobe products, those softwares, they have to be completely turned off, exited. So if by any chance you have uh, Backup and Sync or Dropbox or all of them on, um, this is not going to work. You're going to get an error. I don't know why this is like that. I don't know why Sony did it like that, but this is the way it is. And when I was trying to set this up, it was super frustrating. Now, the other thing that you're going to need in order to tether is the app. And this application is called Imaging Edge from Sony. So let me show you how to download it. To access the app, is going to be super simple. ImagingEdge.Sony.net. And then you're going to choose your version. You're going to choose either the Windows version or the Mac version. Now, once you download and install the app, it's actually going to install three apps. One is called Remote, the other one is called Viewer, and the other one is called Edit. Now, the Remote app is the one that we're going to be concentrating because it's the one that's going to give you the capability to connect to Lightroom. Now, the Viewer app is kind of like an app that allows you to preview the images, you know, as you take the picture and it goes to the computer. It's a Sony proprietary software. I don't use it. I try to use it. It kind of sucks <laughs> so out of the way with that one and the edit allows you to edit the image and stuff like that I've never used that one so remote app in Lightroom is what we're gonna be concentrating today all right so the next thing that you're gonna have to do is get the proper cable that has the same port that your camera has and your computer has so in my case the 7R Pro has USB-C and so does my MacBook Pro so the cable that I'm gonna be using is this one that you see right here Tether Pro is the brand USB-C to USB-C and this one is the 4.6 meter. Now they have it in different lengths so you can get the one that suits you best. So now that you have the app and you have the cable, what you're gonna do is you're gonna restart your computer, you're gonna start up fresh and you're gonna turn off backup and sync, you're gonna turn off Google Drive if you have it on, you're gonna turn off any Adobe software including the Adobe Creative Cloud, a little icon that always appears at the top. So let me show you what I would do in this case. So you can see that I have the Dropbox icon on and I have my Google Drive or backup and sync trying to do something. Uh, luckily I have my Lightroom off, but if I would have it on, I would have to uh, shut it off. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with a backup and sync. So we're gonna go right here in my computer is control on the uh, PC, I believe it's alt and click. Now we're gonna quit this one and Dropbox, we're gonna again, control or alt and quit the Dropbox. So you have restored your computer, you have Image and Edge installed in your computer, and you have turned off Google Drive, Backup and Sync, Dropbox, and all the Adobe apps. Now, let's talk about the settings in the camera. Okay, so you're gonna hit menu on the back of your camera, and you're gonna go to the third tab the, with the world, and then on the first page, you're gonna go to PC Remote Function. Now, what you're gonna do right there is uh, turn PC Remote on. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Now the other thing that you can see right here, it says cannot recognize USB cable. That is because I haven't plugged a USB cable in my camera. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And there you go. So now my camera is actually reading the USB cable and the USB cable is also connected to the computer. Okay, so now we have the computer and the camera ready for this. Now we're gonna fire the remote app and let's get started. Okay, so I have the remote app right here. We're gonna fire it. If by any chance your computer doesn't recognize the camera, just simply hit the refresh button and you should see your camera appearing right there. There you go. Now, in order to connect, you're going to have to double click on the camera selected here. So we're going to double click and it's telling us that now it's waiting for the camera to do its thing. Now, as you can see, we are connected. Look at me. So the lens that I'm using right now is uh, actually an APS-C lens um, on a 7R4, so I'm in APS-C mode. 
and you're gonna excuse the exposure right here but for the purpose of this demonstration this is more than enough all right so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna tell remote where to start saving all of our files so we're gonna hit the save folder so I'm gonna create a folder right now inside my extreme SSD this is really good because I'm not only going to be shooting into my SD cards inside the camera but also I'm gonna be saving back in all my information in the hard drive that I use for all my photography so ideally I save it inside this folder but I'm just gonna create a folder right here called YouTube tethering test there you go so this is going to be the folder where I am going to be saving all my images from the camera so I hit open so there are also other parameters that you can actually explore uh, for example right here file naming is set up by default uh, as auto but you can actually configure it and really customize your file naming so if you want to do that you can do that and there are some other options that you can actually explore like for example setting right here so you have the modal operation uh, pairing image transfer right here you can actually opt for saving the images only on the computer or saving both on the camera and PC which is what I would recommend so you have double the backup um, so see you can PC only PC and camera or camera only and uh, both shooting live view preview now one of the features that I would recommend that you actually explore is how you want to save your images so in this case you know I have it set up in PC plus camera um, you may not want to have it on your camera, you may only want to have it on the PC, so you can hit PC only, but it's going to be really up to you. So now we have configured the remote app, now let's configure Lightroom. Now that we have Lightroom open, we're going to go File, we're going to go to Auto Import Settings, make sure that uh, enable Auto Import, and also we're going to adjust some settings right here in Auto Import Settings. So click over there, now you're going to be prompted with this message. Uh, there is something here that says enable auto import you want to have that clicked so then you're going to select the same folder that you created in the remote app this is going to be the folder where all the images are going to be saved uh, double click or choose all right so the first folder that we selected is the watch folder now the second option is the destination you may want to opt to save the images somewhere else and not in the watch folder now i'm going to actually keep it in the same spot so i'm going to select the same folder we're gonna go here and we're gonna select in my hard drive the YouTube tethering test and it's going to create a folder called auto import photos so inside the tethering test folder there's going to be another folder that actually is going to have uh, all your images so you can actually change the naming you could call that Gaston shoot for example now it also gives you the option to add them automatically to a collection so we're gonna create a collection right here and let's call this collection YouTube tethering test or whatever you want now also you have the option to sync with Lightroom and this is something that I do because I back up everything in the creative cloud all right and as you can see YouTube tethering test is the collection selected this is where all the images are going to be auto importing into and then the next settings is file naming you can actually mess with this you know and, and really tweak how do you want your file to be named you can actually create a uh, developed setting so you can actually import the images with some color grading I'm gonna show you guys that in a second so over here we're gonna type some uh, keywords so Gaston tethering YouTube cable Sony and whatever you know uh, keywords you want to use this is gonna allow you to find the images you know in the event that you have thousands of images and uh, you know you get lost so that's that now initial preview standard I leave it like that all the time now we're gonna hit OK the next step is going to be start the tether capture now look what happened when you start tether capture you're also asked to enter a name for the session so we're gonna call the session YouTube one more time YouTube tethering test I'm gonna call this one too and uh, it asks you if you you know if you want to segment the pictures by shot I leave that unchecked uh, session sequence right here I leave it as it is and then again one more time and we're gonna go back to the hard drive we're gonna choose YouTube tethering test folder choose that one right there again we're gonna tell them to add it to the collection and already knows that we selected that collection and you could re-enter all those hashtags that I mentioned before or copy them you know and that's it now I don't know why you have to do this 
so long and so many times, but it is what it is. Now, this option right here, it says disable auto advance. What this option is going to do, if you click it, it's going to take a picture uh, importing Lightroom, but it's not gonna show you the picture. You're gonna have to use the cursor. So uh, leave that unchecked because what you want is every time you take a picture, you want the picture to appear automatically and scroll to the last picture by itself. Um, okay, so we're fine. Now I was trying to detect the camera, that takes sometimes a little bit, but I found that if you cancel, it doesn't matter, so I do that. All right, now that we have everything set up, camera, computer, app, the whole nine yard, uh, now it's safe to actually restart your Google Drive if you want, or your Dropbox. You know, a lot of the times I save into Dropbox directly so my image can actually start syncing as I, you know, start taking pictures. So that's, that's actually really, really handy, especially if you're connected in high-speed internet. So we're gonna take a couple of pictures and I'm gonna actually shoot something that I have right here. I have a little plan and a bunch of lenses and cables. So check this out. Now we're gonna switch to Lightroom. We're under the collection YouTube, under the develop module. And it may take a little while, so you gotta be patient with this. But we're gonna see, there you go. And it says building standard previews and boom, there we have it. That's the image that I just took. Now I can take another image. So I'm gonna take an image of my computer actually. And I'm taking a picture of my computer. Um, you know, the more resolution you have, the more you have to wait, unfortunately. So I recommend that if you're gonna be tethering, maybe you stick to 24, uh, 26, or you know, maybe 7R4, 7R3, it's actually way too much. Now here is the second image, as I mentioned before, guys. And this works, you know, it really works. So let's take another picture. Take a picture of my main camera. I'm gonna take a picture of my overhead camera right there. I'm gonna take a picture of my iPad. And now we're gonna switch to Lightroom. So this one right here was the one of the computer. This one is the one of my main camera right there. And uh, if we're patient, it's gonna show us the other image that is coming through. Now, remember that I mentioned before, if you don't get the right cable, you are actually going to struggle with this camera. And this is the reason why, you know, for the purpose of this test, I'm doing it with a regular cable because I don't have a tethering cable here at home. But you wanna do it exactly with a tethering cable. Now, remember that I mentioned before about the auto advance option, that if you uncheck it, it should auto advance. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, and I found out that if you press the uh, caps lock, sometimes it does it more often. So I don't know why that is, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, at least to myself. So let's do another test right there. Take a picture of this little plant. All right, and now we're gonna switch back to Lightroom and the image is right here. Now, the other image that I took is gonna take a little while because remember, first records to the buffer and then from the buffer it goes through the cable to the computer and here it is. See, for some reason it's not doing the auto advance. It's a little bit weird. What you can see right, right there is that you have the tags that we actually enter in the import settings already coming here, uh, you know, without you having to retype it. And let's say we wanna make some adjustment to this image. So let's say we wanna bring down the temperature, make it a little bit colder. Uh, we want the exposure to be a little bit cranked. You know, we wanna reduce some of those highlights right there. We wanna crank the shadows. And uh, I'm gonna do something super unrealistic just so you guys can tell the difference. Let's say I wanna convert all my images to black and white, uh, you know, or you can do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a setting based on all this parameter. And again, you can actually took the curves. Let's give her a little bit of a black fade right there. There you go. So let's say I went through all the settings right here and I adjusted a bunch of stuff and I took my time with the first couple of pictures. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually come right over here under presets. I'm gonna hit the plus button and I'm gonna create a preset. Now I'm gonna create this preset and I'm gonna name this preset uh, YouTube Tethering. Tethering. There you go, all caps. If you would wanna remove some of the settings, you can actually click or and click. So I'm gonna leave it as it is because we want exactly the same as that we just tweaked. Now hit create, okay? And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go back to auto import settings. And now what we're gonna do, 
make sure that collection add to collection is uh, is actually checked again because every time you go back to this option it unchecks it automatically i don't know why so what we're going to do right now is we're going to choose a develop setting so what we're going to do right now is we're going to choose a develop setting and we're going to go to user preset and we're actually going to check for youtube tethering which is the last setting that we create now that we have created a preset and we actually have selected a preset to be used with the importing all the images. We're gonna take a couple of pictures and you guys are gonna see how those images are gonna come already rendered with our color grading. So we took those images. Now let's switch back into Lightroom. And as you guys can see right now, those images are coming with the setting that we have selected. This is a super powerful feature. If you're gonna be using the same computer to capture Tether as the computer that you're gonna to use to edit your images, you're gonna to save tons of time. So in my case, I bring my MacBook Pro 15 inches 2018, I plug my camera into the computer, start taking pictures, you know, the pictures render with my color profile or my user setting, and then by the time I wanna start editing my images, it's barely anything what I have to do. So. This saves me a lot of time because I can just go home, raise some of my images, create a gallery for my customer, upload it in Dropbox, send them the link, and I'm done for the day. So what do you guys think about this feature? Drop your comments down below. All right guys, so I hope you had enjoyed this video and I decided to put it together because I remember when I tried to set up my camera to tether for the first time, it was a nightmare. Um, some of the information that I found online actually doesn't talk about these problems that you can run into. And that's why I focus on those first because if you don't turn out Dropbox, uh, Backup and Sync or Google Drive and any of the Adobe products, the Imaging Edge app is not going to work. And that is completely ridiculous and I don't know why Sony decided to do that. Guys, let me know what you think about this tutorial. Let me know if you tether. And again, remember, get the proper cable, get the proper settings in your camera, get the proper settings in the app in Lightroom, and as always, restart your computer fresh. So remember, if you have any problem, turn everything off and restart the computer. Now, pay attention because when you restart the computer, usually Dropbox and Backup and Sync uh, start up automatically, so you gotta turn those off again. Also, the Creative Cloud, make sure that it's completely gone. No Lyra, no Photoshop, no Premiere, none of the Adobe products. I don't know why. But anyway, guys, I hope you had enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channels for more videos like this one. Hit the notification button, like it or dislike it twice, and I'll see you again in another video. Take care.